Everybody knows, uh, you know, Nipsey. Yeah, yeah, R.P. How did that affect you, being from Cali? And it affected me different, because like I tell people, we grew up together. Okay. Like we went to the same thing in high school and all that shit. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so, like I tell people, I don't know Nipsey. Like, I know Airmen. Like, yeah. I, I never met the game being inside of me. I don't know 6 old neighborhood, never. I have no idea who that is. You, you, I, I, know, I know Ermius, like, and I know that side of him. Like, like the side that people see after Nip died, that's the side I've always knew. Like, you mm. know what I'm saying? Like, let's get this black shit together, black excellence. Like, this is what we own. Like, I didn't know neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? So I tell people that all the time. Like, but it, it affected me a lot because it's just confirmation that anybody who tries to uplift the black race on the, not like you got all these conscious niggas, they just talkers. Yeah, all he's these, actually on the, all on the these, front lines. All these conscious, that. quote unquote, conscious rappers and conscious <coughs> spokesmen and all that shit, they just talkers. That's all they do is blog and argue and debate, right? I'm talking about when you get black people that really is out here playing this monopoly game, like on the mainstream level, they wipe them out. So, it's sad. Yeah, it's, it, like, I tell people this, our real leaders get killed. Like our real, real leaders that get in any form of position to really make a large difference get killed. And it's also, it's normally the people that got control over the streets. Like not the regular conscious niggas that the hood don't respect. It's, yeah. the, it's the conscious niggas in the hood that got control over the streets. Like them type of people, man. Them people get wiped out. So are you, how are you now embracing what Nipsey was trying to, to See, teach? That, that goes back into like a lot of the shenanigans I do, right? Like I do these shenanigans to hide in plain sight. Okay. You feel me? Like, like there's algorithm, there's destructive algorithms designed to attack certain people that is pressing certain agendas. So when I do the wild shit or the clown shit, like they back up off me because they like, oh, he, he goofing around. Nobody gonna take him serious. Cool. So that's just for them to back up off me. But just after Nip passed, um. It was two things that I knew was going to happen. And I knew that LA was going to go up in flame because Nip was the peacemaker. He's the middleman to damn near all the hoods. You know what I'm saying? He's a peacemaker. So when you remove that chess piece from the board, like everybody going to attack. Yeah. And the first couple of days, it was wild. Like the first three days after Nip passed, it was wild. Like you seen 15 people shot, nine people shot over there. It was wild, wild. And then like that morning, like maybe three days later, four days later, that morning, I'm like, yo, I, I, I got on Twitter. And I'm like, yo, man, we need like a million game banker march. Like we need some shit like that ASAP because this shit about to get hectic. Yeah. And if one of these big homies don't stand up to do it, like nigga, LA gonna be on fire forever. Like, and then that, like maybe like a couple hours later, Big E made the post. Mm -hmm. And that's what we saw all, all the pictures all of the, the, the march. All the extra shit, up. yeah. So that was good, man. Like I, I'm glad that happened. You know what I mean? Because LA, it's still a few knuckleheads that still. Yeah, you're, you're gonna have. Yeah, you don't get the people, but like LA look kind of real peaceful right now. So it, has it? Is it still peaceful? Yes, yeah, it's, it's still straight. It's still like problems. But but it ain't as lit as it was. Cause I mean, when you got you know somebody like Nipsey who's who's working with with YG, you know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah, that, I mean. Everything can't be about war. If if these two guys was in two separate games can get along and actually be brothers, yeah. then you know the other game members should be able. But to Nip, that was Nip. Like Nip, if you understand who he was when we was kids, he was always like that. Like he was always the middleman between the Bloods and the Crips. And this was before neighborhood. Yeah. This is Emmys. Like he was always like in the middle of the Bloods and the Crips. Like oh y'all come over here, y'all come over here, stop that, stop that, stop that. So it just it sucks that we had to lose him for this to happen, but it's yeah. amazing at the same time. Yeah, and hopefully, you know, we can keep this up and I just, and, like, and I said this in a few blogs, but I was like, only way is, it's, it's gonna die out because now that we together, parties are gonna happen. And then I know what happens when people get alcohol in their system and, and you know, shit just stupid happens. Nonsense. Stupid nonsense. nonsense. So, I, I had made a proposition for the big homies. I'm like, yo, big homies, all the big homies need to meet and sit at the table from every hood. What y'all need to do is y'all need to call meetings in each individual hood and tell all the little homies, y'all gotta put in a thousand dollars in the pot. You got, you got, I don't know, 
it's probably like 5,000, 6,000 niggas from every hood. Yeah. You feel me? You, you put 6,000, you get 6,000 niggas put $1,000 in the pot. You feel me? That's 6,000 from that hood. That's 4,000 from that hood. That's 28, whatever. And then y'all finish buying what Nip Lim was buying. Yeah. Like y'all niggas could buy, y'all could buy hoods, right? Cause that's what it really is about. Yeah. We can't say we from somewhere if we don't you own don't it. Own nothing there. That's, yeah, and that's what Nick was doing. He was and buying back the hood. Yeah. So niggas need to put a fuck the cars, fuck the Bentleys, fuck throwing the money in the strip club, fuck the rolly chain, fuck all that. Bum it out for about two years. Bum it out. Save your bread. Everybody put it in the pot and let's buy back the neighborhood. That way we got our own store. We got our own lot. We need more people like you saying what you saying that people are actually gonna really listen I, I've to. I've been it. trying to push this shit for the longest, but you know, social media got people attention different. We don't follow we don't follow people who saying the right shit. We follow people that are the most numbers. Yeah. yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's what that's that's where, where everything like gets a, messed a, up. A person will look at you and go, man, you only got two thousand followers. You ain't making no sense. Yep. Not even if it makes sense. Like it doesn't nah, matter. It don't matter. You don't got enough you don't got enough followers for me to take you serious. Mm -hmm. And so that's another way they got our people fucked yep. mentally, physically. So, so I would just say, like, I continue to do what I do. I say what I need to say in, in interviews and blogs. And, and I, I say the things that I need to say amongst my homies and amongst the people I know. And all I can do is hope they can fuck. Yeah. Smush Parker here, formerly up to the Los Angeles Lakers. And you are now tuned in to Real Fans Real Talk.